Hey guys, welcome to Individual Investor. This is another video on the applications of EBITDA. This time, we will discuss briefly the EBITDA margin. If you haven't watched my previous video on EBITDA, please check it out first and then come back because we will use our previously EBITDA calculation from Facebook's 10K form in order to compute the EBITDA margin. Enjoy. EBITDA margin is a measurement of profitability and operating performance. As we learned in my EBITDA video, EBITDA is a measurement of earnings without all the considerations of accounting and taxes. EBITDA is basically pure earnings. But the challenge with EBITDA on its own is that it doesn't tell you much when comparing different size companies. Naturally, larger companies will have a higher EBITDA than smaller ones. So the use of EBITDA margin allows us to compare the profitability of different companies regardless of their size. EBITDA margin is also a figure that we can look over multiple periods of time to understand if the profitability is trending in the right direction. EBITDA margin is represented in a percentage and can be simply calculated by taking the EBITDA and dividing it by the total revenue for the same time period. All right, let's put this into practice and calculate the EBITDA margin for Facebook in the year 2020. So here in my Google Sheet, we have the figures that we previously used in my EBITDA video to calculate Facebook's EBITDA. And all we need to do is figure out the total revenue uh, in order to get our EBITDA margin. So here in the 10K form, we have to go to the financial statements and then statement of income. And it's super straightforward. Actually, it's right here in the first line. So here where you see revenue, and then for the year 2020, the revenue is $85.965 billion. And that's exactly the figure that we need. So I'm gonna put that here, 85.965, okay, that's, um, in, in billions. And then all we need to do for the EBITDA margin is divide the EBITDA figure by the total revenue. And then there we go. We have an EBITDA margin of 49.99% for Facebook in the year 2020. And to validate this figure, I actually have here the uh, Facebook page from Morningstar.com and here under operating performance we can find the EBITDA margin as well uh, for the year 2020 right here EBITDA margin we can see that it is indeed 49.99 percent there you go hopefully that wasn't too hard now remember though that whenever you're dealing with EBITDA or with any figure or ratio that relies on EBITDA, you're effectively not considering things like leverage or debt, taxes or capital expenditures that are used to buy assets that then depreciate over time. Therefore, you can have a very attractive EBITDA or EBITDA margin, but still end up with a very small income or sometimes even negative income. That's why it is recommended that you look at the EBITDA margin in conjunction with other margins like the operating margin. Ideally, you wanna see a healthy correlation amongst all margins. To drive this concept home, let's now look at Facebook's operating performance over the last six years. So here we're looking for two things. One is the increasing margins over time and two, the correlation between all margins. This is a great example because it shows some impressive figures in 2014 and 2015. Look how Facebook managed to increase margins considerably while EBITDA just went from six to eight billion dollars. This shows great profitability. Then in the years after that, EBITDA consistently increased year over year while EBITDA margin and operating margin remained fairly consistent on average. In the years 2017 and 2018, margins decreased, and indeed, we expect and see some correlation there. If EBITDA margin remained flat, but operating margin dropped, or worse, 
if they were to move in the opposite direction, this would be considered a red flag. All right, that's it for now, guys. Thank you so much for joining. Please don't forget to like this video if it was useful and also subscribe to my channel. I have many more videos that can help you in your journey as individual investors. Thanks again and goodbye.